Hello and welcome back to my channel L History. This is a video on how to prepare for exams and I hope that it is for university students but also for A-level students, GCSE students but also for students who are not in this country, the UK. My advice I hope will, and my tips I hope will help you kind of prepare yourself and feel more relaxed and more confident about taking your exams. I know that it is a very stressful time. I understand I was a student myself and honestly, I hated exams. Now that I'm on the other side where I am marking exams, I can see that I stressed out a bit too much for nothing. What I mean by that is that as long as you are prepared and as long as you follow the advice and tips that your lecturers are already giving you and the ones that I'm going to give you now, you will be fine. I think that when we think about exams, we have this anxiety and stress that somehow we're going to fail, we're not good enough and they're all like those bad thoughts and negative thoughts that we tell ourselves that kind of like creeped in and like tell us that we are very very bad at what we do it's not true the truth is if you've been to lectures if you've been to seminars you will succeed in your exams the thing is like the key and in the preparation of exam it takes place from the beginning it takes place in the class where you participate where you give your opinion where you do all of this when as long as you do that you will be fine now i know you might look at my video and say well, I'm not that type of student. I actually don't participate. I don't, I've skipped a few seminars and lectures. It is also fine. As long as you really, really want to make up for it during your revision sessions, during you, the time you've allocated for preparing for your exam, you will be fine. So please, first of all, is my first, 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 first tip is really, really, really try to have a confidence. Try to remind yourself that you are going to be okay. The other thing that you need to remember, and it is very important, it comes from someone who puts lots of grades on lots of papers, a grade cannot define you. Forget about that. Forget about thinking, oh my God, if I get a bad grade, then I'm a bad person, I'm a bad student. That's not true. I had bad grades when I was a student. It happened, right? I know, ah! but it happened. It is okay. You will be okay. A bad grade doesn't mean that you're going to fail. A bad grade doesn't mean that you cannot be successful. So as long as you remove that fear, like, let's try to have fun preparing for exam, to study and to revise. I know I, I use the word fun, but that's what I really believe. My first tip for preparing for exam is actually not to reread and reread and reread and to highlight all your notes in different colors. You need to do that uh, when you want to do an essay. I and I'll go into one video for that at some point. But here, rereading, rereading without a meaning, without a purpose is not gonna help you. The method that actually helps and that is proven to help is a testing method. So here it is, I think, general for any students, for any topics, for any subjects. You have to test yourself and say, okay, what have I learned? So if, for example, if you're in one of my classes and you're learning about Elizabeth I, okay, what have I learned about Elizabeth I? What is so important in her reign? Obviously, you're going to have to think about the Catholic threats, um, the domestic problems, the foreign policies, um, Elizabeth's gender. Elizabeth religious settlement and you kind of have to make notes to, to make sure that you have understood what's happening. I think here the key thing when you're testing yourself is to ask yourself, have I understood what I'm supposed to understand? Which means that am I grasping the topic well? If you don't, then you need to go back to that. But if you do, you need to start testing yourself and making sure. And also like when you start asking yourself questions, when you're in that moment of testing, your brain learns better, your brain remembers better. My next tip is really about being productive. Hear me out. If you start revising at 8 a.m. and you end your revision sessions at, you know, 8 p.m., 10 p.m., midnight, it's not gonna work. You need to be intense in your revision sessions. You need to put yourself out there, but you also need to take some breaks. You cannot completely focus on something for longer than one hour, two hours. So my tip is to have very kind of like 
intense revision sessions of two hours and then have a break of one hour 30 minutes in the evenings try to cut yourself some slack and try to relax and try to do something else i'm not telling you to party here because i think that you need to wake up the next morning and to do the revision sessions <laughs> but watch a movie go to the cinema have a nice meal with your friends all of this is okay but during the day make sure to have some breaks it's very important for you and for your brain not to be caught up in that oh i need to revise everything and actually to make sure that when you are in your sessions when you are revising you're doing it you're not procrastinating you're not looking at your phone you're not doing something else you know watching youtube you know what i mean you are doing this so that's very very key the next tip in this video and I think in many ways, I'm not even sure, like really sure how you're tested if you're doing science, but in the humanities, I would advise you to choose your topics. You cannot revise 12, 16 topics. I mean, that is not really realistic, especially as you know that you're gonna have a choices of questions anyway. So choose your topics, choose the topics that you really want to know in depth. And I'm gonna tell you something else, whatever your topics and subject is, you know, try to show that you're interested in these topics because once you do, you're gonna want to learn and it's gonna make the revision sessions, the studying sessions, a lot more fun. My last general tip, and I think in many ways is the most important one, hear me out. Please do practice past exam papers, but not only that, check if you have any exam report that has been left, you know, on your, online virtual um, learning environment you know uh, platform make sure that you have access to all of that ask your lecturers or teachers if they have any uh, past exam reports where they explain what they look for where and make sure you have the guidelines and the grading skills if you can have access to 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 these documents that would be amazing if you can't still check the past exam papers and practice them there is no better way than, you know, when you're revising, when you're preparing for exam, than practicing past exam papers. That's the, the thing that is almost more important than just testing yourself, because by doing that, not only you're testing yourself, but you're putting yourself in the condition of an exam and removing in many ways the stress, because why are we so stressed out when we take an exam? Well, we are because either it's the first time or either we had a bad you know, uh, experience in a previous year. And so the more you practice, the more you put yourself, okay, I have one hour, I'm only doing that. Your brain is used to that. And once you're in the real exam, then you're totally fine. Then you think, oh, it's fine. I remember being in that setup. I remember how it feels like to be pressured by the time, all right? So if you have anything to do, please do practice past exam papers, regardless of your subjects do that that will be so helpful and you will feel way more confident and way more secure once you take the real exam okay right now i'm gonna give an extra tip but it's mostly i'm afraid for the humanities and even history i would like you as well like when you choose your topics in history elizabeth I or whatever you know world war ii or the cold war whatever you're studying you have to make a list of the historiography make a list of all the big historians with their names or the more most recent be on top of what's been done and make sure that you understand their arguments and you put their arguments next to their names so when you revise and when you test yourself and when you practice past texts and papers and when you have these intense revision sessions it's very easy for you to go back to their names to remember the names to recall their names so making lists can be very very useful especially when you take a subject like history and you need to understand the histography of a topic all right this is it for this video i hope this was helpful if you have any questions any comments please like leave them down below i will reply to you i wish you the best of luck for exams i used to hate them but honestly i promise you if you follow my tips and if you practice past exam papers you will be absolutely fine and also remember that a grade that a grade is just a grade it will not define you ever all right your value is not attached to a grade Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you next in my video and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye.